This is Minda Wilson with Urgent Care, and I'm really excited to welcome Dr. Joe Willardson, uh, a, a dentist extraordinaire. He has an amazing educational background. He's on the cutting edge of dental technology. And of course, uh, the mouth, the mouth health often reflects a person's individual health and keeping your mouth healthy is critical to keeping your body healthy. So welcome, Dr. Willitson. I'm very excited to talk to you. Hi, Amanda. Thank you. It's great to be on. Um, I think we have some really exciting uh, new things in dentistry that are happening that uh, a lot of people don't know about. And actually, a lot of dentists don't know about because of just traditional ways that dentistry is being taught in the dental schools. So what are so, some of those things that we should let people know? Well, I'm going to back up a little bit. I think one of the things that, that I see in my dental practice is patients tend to be in a dental cycle. So what that means is, you know, as a teenager, you might get a filling and then that turns into a bigger filling and then that turns into a crown and then that turns into a root canal and then those teeth get removed. So there's this dental cycle that people go through throughout their life and every time they go to the dentist, something else needs to be fixed. You know, another dentist work needs to be replaced or something is failing. And I think a lot of that is due to just older materials and techniques that were taught um, in traditional dental school. But what's happening now is there's new materials and new techniques where we can cut that dental cycle and break that that, that, that uh, routine that patients go through. And so what's happening is we're starting with the basis of the natural tooth and using that as our guide. So we're trying to create materials and techniques that mimic the function, the shape, and the ability that the natural tooth has. So when we do that, we want to be very conservative in our treatment plans. So, for example, um, in my practice, uh, we've cut down the number of root canals by about 80%. So when I got out of dental school compared to now, I'm doing 80% less root canals because of new techniques and materials. What are you doing that makes it so that you don't have to do the root canal? So let's, let's talk about a root canal, for example. So you start to get a cavity, and that cavity starts to grow bigger and bigger inside the tooth. And it, it gets to a certain point where that infection inside the tooth encroaches in on the root canal itself. Mm -hmm. Well. The traditional approach was once it encroached on that space that you would automatically do the root canal, um, even though the tooth was still vital. Mm. So now what we do is we we have the ability to clean everything out, stop shy of the nerve, seal it off, and from that point, let the tooth respond naturally. Mm. And so... If the tooth is not vital, if the tooth is dead, there's, you know, we don't really have that choice. We have to do a root canal. Mm -hmm. But if the tooth is still alive, then we have the ability to seal it. And, and the, and the, I guess there's a saying in, in the biomimetic dentistry says, that if you seal, it will heal. And I find that to be true a large majority of the time. So it's, it's things like that that, um, I think are really exciting. And we're starting to see the, the clinical research backing these things up. So it's not just my clinical experience or the clinical experience of other doctors, but it's actual research that we're finding. Now, it's, I find it interesting because, you know, like with everything, as people age, their, their mouth sort of changes. And, um, you know, in terms of taking care of your mouth, you have to be more vigilant as you get older. So what are what are some of the things that people can do to sort of help maintain better uh, dental health as they get older? Oh, that's a great a great topic because you're right. Um, the mouth is very dynamic. Everything is shifting. Um, worn down, chipped, broken teeth, rotated teeth, crowded teeth. Those are all typically signs of age because your teeth are moving. It's called mesial drift. Everything is moving down and forward. And so as we get older, the alignment of our teeth starts to change. Um, think of it like this. When, when your alignment is out in your car, 
and your steering wheel is sideways, but you're still driving straight, the tires wear out. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, the, you, you're, you know, you wear through those. And it's just like your teeth. If you look at teeth and the alignment is not right, you'll start to things, see things wear down, shift, and, and break. So to answer your question, one of the first important things in my practice is to make sure that the alignment in the teeth is is staying uh, true and, and consistent. So as you get older, you know, I have a lot of patients that are finding themselves back in braces. As a matter of fact, I'm back in braces right now. I'm 48 years old, and uh, this is my second round of braces because I noticed that my teeth were starting to wear. And that was all a matter of my bite being off. So if we can get the alignment, that will keep people out of trouble for a very long time. Wow. So how do people start to know that their mouth is starting to get misaligned? Are there signs Uh, that people can look at? Yes, absolutely. Some of the signs and symptoms that you would look at is look at the lower front teeth. If they're starting to crowd, that's a sign of that mesial drift or that that forward motion of the teeth um, moving. Uh, The other thing is if the teeth are starting to wear and chip on the edges, that's another sign. If the teeth are starting to rotate, uh, another big sign is when you bite down, if your front teeth are hitting much more than your back teeth, that's another sign as well. Hmm. So the, the bite alignment is so important in keeping a healthy mouth. It's not just about cavities and um, gingivitis and gum disease. Yeah. So, but... But there's also a lot of interesting things going on in biometrics for yeah, taking so care of the mouth. Th- that's right. So what biomimetic dentistry is, it's, it means to mimic nature. And so what's happening is these new materials that we're using to repair and fix teeth will actually function like a natural tooth. So, for example, uh, the materials that we use to do a simple filling, that material is going to flex and bend just like a natural tooth does. Because the old school way of doing it was, you know, you would put a silver filling in there, uh, it would be very rigid, and then sooner or later what you see happening is the tooth start to crack around those silver fillings. Mm-hmm. And then from there you get leakage and then you end up needing a crown or a root canal. So if we can be conservative and not have to drill away so much tooth structure to get a filling to work, and if that filling flexes and bends and moves like a natural tooth, then that filling is going to last much longer. A lot of times I can I can feel pretty confident in telling a patient, look, I think this is the last time you're going to have to fix this tooth based off of the treatment that we just did because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so confident in these techniques and materials. So it seems that using my... So how do you, when you're looking, talking to your dentist or when you're looking for a dentist, what are some of the questions that people should be asking them? Like, Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that can be a tough one. Um, it's so funny because people nowadays have the Internet, and a lot of my new patients will come prepared with questions that I wasn't expecting them to ask, but I'm glad they do. Um, I think some of the questions would be, you know, how do you feel about um, keeping the, you know, what's your training in the, in the bite and how, how do you manage the bite? What are your thoughts about orthodontic treatment as an adult? Um, you know, what are your thoughts about minimally invasive or conservative dentistry? There's a, a group, the, uh, the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry, that is a whole group of dentists that um, believe in being conservative in treatment and have been trained in a lot of these materials and techniques. Not to say that other dentists aren't either, because, look, you don't have to be part of that group to have good training. So so, let me, so let's say somebody's gone down the wrong road. They have silver feelings. They have implants. Um, you know, and if you have an implant, then often there's gum recession around the implant, which isn't good either, right? Correct. So. Yeah. I, I think. You know, most everyone has some bit of dental work in their mouth to one degree or another. And um, depending on 
the materials and the technique that was used, there's a certain lifespan to any bit of dental work that's placed in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of patients can recognize when something's going wrong. You know, a lot of times they'll see dark staining around an old filling. They can see cracks in their teeth. They can see, um, you know, different metals exposed in dentistry. Um, we're in dentistry today. We're, we're there's a large trend to move away from using any sort of metals in in dentistry. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but <laughs> I might have got sidetracked there. No, you were answering it. The question we're, we're sort of discussing like what what people could do to manage their own dental health because. Uh, you know, and we're learning that people have to be proactive in their medical care all around. So, um, so some of the things that you've pointed out that are really critical are, are you noticing that your bite has changed? Have you seen, uh, are your front teeth shifting? Do you notice a gum recession? You know, if you do notice it, is it easier to floss than it used to be? So, if you start noticing those things, there are a lot of new things that people haven't been exposed to that you have available that you are sharing with us. So, you know, that's sort of where we're trying to figure out. Then they know to ask for it, right? That's right. No, you're, you're exactly right. Um, noticing all of those things, I think, is the first step. And then finding the right doctor that that understands the training, but also fits the patient's personality. And a lot of times, look, patients are afraid to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really need to be that way anymore. I, I always say, look, if you're afraid of going to the dentist, you're, you're going to the wrong dentist. Um, find a, a doctor that fits your personality and uh, your, your philosophy and treatment. Um, you know, me being in the field, it's easy for me to to find doctors that agree or see eye to eye with my philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're a person that's not in the dentistry field and, and you're trying to figure out, OK, well, how do I find out more? How do I want that sort of treatment for myself? I want treatment that's going to last a lot longer than my old crown or my old root canal or I don't want an implant. Um, I think it's important to to educate yourself in the, the internet has a lot of great resources um like i said the academy of biomedic dentistry has a large resource of dentists that have been trained this way um usc is one of the first schools to to really um advocate this and put this type of dentistry in their curriculum um so i didn't go to usc but i i know a lot of doctors that have and and there's a lot of great doctors that from other dental schools as well that follow along these same lines. And I think the bottom line of the underlying message is we want to be conservative. We don't want to just um, use some of these older techniques. Yeah, so some of the newer techniques that we've discussed so far is this biomedics, but also laser dentistry is sort of making uh, its way into the practice as well. Absolutely, and, and and laser dentistry can fall underneath that label of biomimetic because remember we're we're trying to to treat or operate in a in a natural fashion, and and laser dentistry is great. Um, you know we see a lot of it for treating gum disease. Mm -hmm. uh, we use lasers here at my office. I'm I'm in Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, here at True Dentistry, and you know we use lasers. My hygienists are trained in lasers. Um, so, yeah, it's those sorts of things that patients should look for. You know, how up to date is the office and how up to date is the training that the doctor has? I think as you, as patients look online and they start to see the bios on these doctors that they're checking out, most doctors will include their training on their mm -hmm. websites. Right. Right, right. So, so if you have, if your gums are bothering you, um, you're, you're probably going to, you know, the old fashioned way, you know, I don't know what might not is painful. Treating gum disease has been very painful, but with laser treatment, it's, it's certainly less painful. 
and has a better result. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I think some of the old traditional ways, the mechanics of cleaning the teeth are still mm -hmm. the same. You know, if you've got gum disease and your hygienist needs to get in there and clean your teeth, she's still going to need to do that. But to your point, when you incorporate laser therapy along with the <clears throat> traditional mechanical way of cleaning teeth, um, we get better results. We get uh, better long-term results. And for and people so that are aging, it you know, it, it can keep your, you can keep your teeth longer, you can age better because again you know people are living longer you know absolutely and, and i'll tell you what yeah i mean one of, one of the biggest things i think one of the hardest things in my dental practice to do is have an elderly patient in my chair that's been through the dental cycle they've started with fillings they've gone through crowns root canals dentures all of these things and you can tell that they've done pretty much everything the dentist has told them to do. But mm -hmm. now they're in a situation where a lot of that old dental work needs to be replaced, and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's coming at a time in their life when they're now retired and on a fixed income, and all of a sudden, all of this old dental work, you know, 28 teeth of, of 20 teeth that have had dental work that now need to be replaced, it gets very expensive. And so now they're faced with some pretty hard um, choices. Right. You know, do we extract the teeth and put in dentures? Do we extract the teeth and put in implants? Or do we try to save what's there? Mm. So that those, I think the hardest thing for me to do is have that conversation with a patient that's not financially ready to take on any of it because it right. hasn't been planned for. But if someone along the way could have helped them take care of some of these problems bit by bit or use different materials and techniques that would have lasted longer so we wouldn't we weren't having this conversation that's what I'm that's my goal that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to keep patients out of that dental cycle as much as I possibly can right so and that's the, yeah the work that I do I want it to last two times longer than the work they had done 20 years ago. Right. And I look at, and I, I'll, uh, and as a personal story, I'll tell you a story. My mother in law, who, uh, ha just has dinner, dent, had ill fitting dentures. Uh, she, she actually lives in Las Vegas, has ill fitting dentures. She just, uh, you know, she's on a fixed income. Uh, she's 90 years old. She just spent what for her is an extraordinary amount of money, a thousand dollars getting a new denture and her mouth is inflamed. She yeah. can't eat. So, yeah. you know, what, it, and to be, and had she gotten better care earlier, she probably wouldn't have been at that place at all. That's right. And exactly. And, and here's the thing you have to understand, you know, there's different procedures where we can put implants in mm -hmm. and, and take the problems that your mother's having, take those away get rid of the ill-fitting dentures, get something that she can chew with. But the cost to do that can be anywhere from twenty to sixty, seventy thousand wow. dollars. And so it it can get, you know, ridiculously expensive to where most patients can't afford to do that. Exactly. And so what ends up happening is is what's going on with your mom where she's having to cope with an ill-fitting denture and um, her quality of life, her digestive system, her ability to chew, her health will take a hit because of that. Right. Because as we started this, the mouth is the key to your health. If you're not eating well, if you get infections, if you're, uh, you know, if you can't at all, it all affects your health and your longevity. That's right. That's right. And and it's funny, you know, I, I do the doctor's TV show from time to time, and we had a patient that we recognized early on because of her dry mouth. I knew something else was wrong. It wasn't just because the teeth were starting to decay. Her mouth was so dry, we had to look deeper into the systemic problems that she might be having. And sure enough, as we looked deeper, we found out that she had lupus. Oh, jeez. But the first sign, like you mentioned, was 
something was wrong with the teeth, and it w- and we picked up on it right away because it wasn't ordinary. And the mouth, I look, I can have someone come sit in my chair, and I can usually kind of get a general idea of how healthy they are just by looking at their teeth and their gums. Right. It is. It really is the first gateway to to your health. And what about insurance? Is there is there an insurance option that people can uh, that can help them cope with these costs, or is the insurance worthwhile? The in- insurance can be worthwhile. Um, there's such a range of coverage that we find. You know, some patients on average get a thousand dollars a year from their insurance company. We have other other uh, contracts where they get five thousand a year. So there's there's a wide range, but it can be helpful if you use it and utilize it. I have so many patients. December is usually our biggest, busiest, busiest month because <laughs> benefits are about to end. And so everyone wants to come in at the end of the year because their benefits are about to, to end. And that's <clears throat> where we see a lot of problems is even though patients have the insurance, they don't utilize the benefits. Using that thousand dollars a year can keep them out of a lot of trouble. Well, but the key thing is, people have to have, you know, a cleaning. You know, they have to make sure they have a cleaning at least once a year. Hopefully, more than that. They have to make sure that they have a checkup. You know, to be proactive in their medical care. I mean, all of these things are critical to good dental health. Correct. That's correct. And, and prevention is so much easier than um, having to actually go in and fix things. What, what I find is patients that are brushing at least two to three times a day mm-hmm. and they're coming in even just twice a year, those checkups are so easy. They're fast. Um, they're keeping things clean, using the right toothbrush. Um, a sonic toothbrush is always, you know, something that I like to see patients use. But you're right, that preventative maintenance is is key. And that's often covered by insurance, is that that preventative maintenance. And it's in your policy if you have it. So if you have a dental policy through your employment or through Medicare, you're it's something that can be very valuable and should be used. That's right. And you know in our office um Sometimes people don't have access to insurance through their their work or if they're self-employed. So in our office, we have a membership program where we um, it includes their cleanings, their maintenance, uh, gives them a substantial discount to their dental care. So those patients that don't have the ability to acquire insurance, we have our own in-house savings program that that gives them, I think, even more, much more benefit oh, yeah. than a traditional in, or insurance program. So if people want to reach out to you to learn more about some of the latest techniques in dentistry, learn more about your practice, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, my practice is truedentistry.com, just T-R-U-E dentistry.com. Um, also on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you know, I, I travel the country teaching, so um, this is something I'm very passionate about and I've been doing for a long time now. So I've seen the benefits and I know how well it works. Well, I'm all for pe- preaching the gospel of good dental care, good dental maintenance, and using modern techniques to improve dental health. So count me in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Willardson, it's been a pleasure, and I hope to have you back. This is Minda Wilson for Urgent Care.